Hello guys and welcome back to Doc Mac Garage and today you probably landed on this video because your vehicle does not start. Now there could be various reasons as to why your vehicle doesn't start but these are the possible causes. It could be a starter motor or it could be a battery or alternator as well. So let's start with the basics first. This video is how to test your battery and your alternator and how to look for battery specs as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the chapters for this specific video so that it gets to the point as to which part of the video you want to see. So you can skip to the part you'd like to see or you can see my whole video so these are the tools you can use to test your battery and your alternator now i do understand that not everyone does have access to all of these tools so what are the cheapest tools you can start off with so the cheapest one i would recommend is a battery voltmeter and this one can set you back around about five to twenty bucks depending on the brand that you buy it just plugs directly into your cigarette lighter and it does display the voltage of the vehicle now it's not the most accurate method however it is pretty close we have got a battery charger maintainer and desulfator as well this is a six amp charger a battery charger maintainer desulfator and also you can test the core cranking amps the crank start and the battery condition as well a battery jump starter so in order to do the test you need a battery jump starter and for those of you who do not have a battery jump starter you can always use jump leads these are very cheap to get and you can use another vehicle to start your other vehicle with a dead battery so I know it's a little bit dark it's because the vehicle is parked in the garage however the video is going to brighten up because I'm going to be on the outside of the vehicle now I'm going to start the car and let's see what happens as I turn the key dead as a doornail you're going to try to turn on your lights turn on your dome lights as well as you can see it's completely dead so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test the battery using this one. I'm going to determine the voltage of the battery currently. If you do not have a battery tester, then you can use a standard multimeter. Just put it to the volt position and then you can test it using the leads. So I've now plugged this unit in to the electricity power. Now I'm going to test the battery using this method. This is your positive battery cap. Plug this side into your positive terminal get a good clamp on there and this side onto your negative terminal it is reading 2.5 volts so the battery is completely dead at the moment for those of you who want to skip ahead you can skip ahead but however this is valuable information now you have to determine how many volts your car battery is now car batteries are typically 12 volts and normally like four-wheel drive and camper batteries are 24 volts so this particular one is a 12 volt battery now when the battery is fully charged it is actually 12.6 volts so it's a six cell battery and if you really look at it if you divide it 12.6 divided by six you'll have 2.1 volts per cell so if you fully charge the battery up and it only reaches up to 10.5 volts or somewhere thereabouts that means one of the cells in the battery is actually dead and there's nothing you can do but to throw that battery away now the other thing to consider as well is the cold cranking amps so if you live in cold climates where it goes below zero celsius then you do have to consider cold cranking amps or even if you don't consider it anyway so cold cranking amps is basically when you start your vehicle and the temperature is zero celsius or below that's how many amps the battery can output for the first 30 seconds so that is very important and over time the cold cranking amp will deteriorate as well and that could kill your battery as well the next thing you got to see for a battery is your rc which is your reserve capacity now reserve capacity basically is when your vehicle's alternator fails that means you're only running on battery power now rc is a reserve capacity and it does that in minutes so this rc is 100 so basically if the battery is fully charged and the alternator fails then the battery is going to last for approximately 100 minutes considering it was fully charged before the car completely comes to a stop all right so this is just an example on my new battery so you can see it says please recycle 2409 what that means is that means when the battery hit the shelf it is september 2024 which means it is a brand new battery right now now that doesn't necessarily mean that the battery was actually made then as you can see here it says kh 4611 so that's 2024 
June 11th. So that means that this one was made 11th of June of 2024. So I know that this battery is good. Now, typically when you do get a new battery, you wanna make sure that it is no longer than six months old while it's sitting on the shelf. We have determined that the battery has only got 2.5 volts left. So what do we do? Now, we can jumpstart the vehicle to see if at all it jumpstarts. Now, how do you know if the alternator has failed or either the battery has failed? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach a jump starter to the vehicle and I'm going to try to start it up. I am going to put the battery jump starter on the vehicle and try to start it up. Now, this is your positive alligator clip and your negative alligator clip. And right here is where you turn on the power so that it jump starts the vehicle. So you never want to turn it on right immediately. So you want to put the jump starter on like so and like so. Give it a good ground post. Turn it on. All right, so now I'm gonna start up the vehicle. Now, one thing to note, and please exercise caution when you're doing this, if you're starting the vehicle in a garage, it could fill up with fumes from the exhaust. So please exercise caution, because when I did start up the vehicle, it did fume up the garage and I did feel kind of dizzy, and it could even kill you if you're not careful. So I just want to take you away from the vehicle for a while. Now, if I was to unplug the jump starter now and the vehicle was to immediately die, then your alternator is bad because the alternator can't charge the battery. Now, you never want to keep your alternator charging a dead battery because you could kill your alternator. For those of you who do not have a jump starter, can you use this jump lead. All right, so you've heard me talk about an alternator. Now, for those of you who do not know what an alternator is, in layman's terms, an alternator is what charges your battery while your vehicle is running. So there is a lot more that I can get into an alternator. However, I'll leave that to another video. Typically, an alternator is driven off your serpentine belt and it's got a pulley on the side of it and that pulley is run by the belt. So your crankshaft actually runs the serpentine belt and the serpentine belt will spin and then it'll spin your alternator and that's what charges your battery. Now, if you guys are in a position where your vehicle does start with a jump starter, what you can do is you can take the vehicle for a drive. However, do exercise caution just in case anything happens such as the vehicle dies off. Now, as you take it for a drive, the alternator will start charging the battery. But again, if you can give it a full charge up, this is the battery post cleaner. Take my 10 millimeter socket and then under this battery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this one out. This is the battery cleaner and you can see on top of here this you do have some corrosion. So what you're going to do is you're going to take an old rag Take an old rag, clean it up, and do not spray WD-40 on these terminals. It's not a good idea. So what you're going to do is you can see this little brushes right here, and you're going to put it on the post right here, and then just push it in. And you can see how clean that battery post looks now. You can see all the filth in there. Now, you do the same for this. I'm not going to show you the same thing. Now, what you can do is you can now take the other side out. And on the other side, you'll have a little brush. And that little brush is to clean the inside of your battery terminal like so. So you put this one in right here. And then what that does is this little wire brush cleans the inside of the terminal. Now, there's a lot more that you need to do than just this. So you need to do it quite a few times, but I want to make the video longer than it should be. You're going to plug your battery charger directly into this post. Like so, just move these two aside. So you can see this is how it should look. All right, so now I've determined it's only 2.5 volts on the battery. What I'm going to do is charge the battery using my battery charger. 
Now, what if you do not have a battery charger? What I recommend is to use jumper cables and hook it up to another vehicle and then start up this vehicle and then you should be able to jump the battery. But bear in mind, if the battery is really low on power, your alternator is really going to take an impact. So I would suggest to unbolt the battery and take it to your nearest auto parts store. You should be able to then get them to fully charge the battery and do a state of health check. They can do what's called a load test on the battery and that'll determine whether you can keep the battery or whether it's worth chucking away. So now I'm charging up the battery. It's worth charging up and then driving the vehicle or it's also worth, if at all, you can start the vehicle just to give it a long drive. A short drive is not going to work. You have to go for a long drive, maybe about a 20 mile drive and then come back and your battery should be fairly well charged. Not fully charged, but fairly well charged. So now I fully charged up the battery. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to use my multimeter to actually test the voltage of the battery. Now for those of you who have got DC, you need to have 20, so DC 20. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to probe the positive and probe the negative, and that's reading as 12 0.76 for me so that means the battery is now fully charged now we have determined that we do have a fully charged battery or at least it's good enough to start the vehicle now now this is your battery and alternator tester you do not need this however this is just an additional step that i'm showing you so an alternator tester shows it as faulty or good and then the state of the battery either fully charged partially charged low charge or battery above 10 volts if the battery is around about 9 volts or so this might not illuminate so all you got to do is take your positive alligator clip and hook it to the positive and your negative to the negative so as you can see here that shows that it is partially charged and battery over 10 volts now because it's an old battery 12.76 might be considered partially charged because i could have charged it for another two three hours it's a 60 amp hour battery and i did charge it for around eight hours if i would have put it 10 hours it would be fully charged so now what i'm going to do is put the positive terminal back in first there'll be a tiny little shock which is normal okay so you want to push that down We're going to put our negative terminal back in and there'll be a little tiny shock. Put this battery cap right back in. And now you can see the engine is running and you can see it's a fully charged battery and the alternator is good. So you're all good right there. Just in case you can't see, there it is. We have got the car all back up and running. Turn on your lights. Lights work great. And then I'm going to show you how you can test it from the inside of your vehicle. All right, so as you can see, it has started to pour down with rain. Now, for those of you who do not have an alternator tester or a multimeter, you can use this particular unit, which is a battery voltmeter. You can basically plug in your USB port as well. So what I'm gonna do is just plug that one into my cigarette lighter port and we'll put it that way. So as you can see here, it's now on 14.1. That means the alternator is charging. Now, typically you want it to be somewhere between 13.8 and about 14.4. Now, it does vary a little bit. So what I'd recommend is you take the vehicle for a drive and then once you're back, you should be able to see it spike up a little bit more to about 14.4. As you can see, the engine is on. Now, how about the battery? What's the voltage of the battery? So what you got to do is turn off the key, take it out, and then you're going to put the key into run position 2 once you put it into run position 2 that will show you your battery voltage you can see it's 12.8 volts so that means it is properly charged all right i hope this video has been useful and, and informative please consider subscribing if you haven't already and look at the rain this is exactly what i got to put up with so give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe i'll see you in the next one